Lebanon's government has finally caved in, like the shattered buildings along Beirut's waterfront. It took an explosion of 2,700 tonnes of ammonium nitrate to bring down the Prime Minister and Cabinet. Today we follow the will of the people to hold accountable those responsible for this disaster that has been in hiding for seven years and their desire for real change from the corrupt, destructive state, state of brokerages and theft, to a state of law and justice and transparency, to a country that respects its people. They'd only been in power since January, sworn in to replace a previous administration forced out after Lebanon's banking system and currency collapsed. Now they have a new crisis to add to all the others. The Justice Minister was asked if she was running away from her responsibilities. Let anyone put themselves in our position. No one wants to be in power under such circumstances. When we're facing everything, a financial collapse, the coronavirus, this national disaster we're facing. So please, it's nothing like running from responsibility. But even one of the biggest non-nuclear explosions since Hiroshima might not be enough to bring significant political change here. The country's parliament and election system is controlled by a political elite that divided up power and influence after the civil war. This catastrophe and this crisis is not enough, unfortunately, for them to be convinced. Because most of them were the actors of the war. And they do not think properly, peacefully, in a civilized way in order to get the people reach the power. They want to keep the power in their hands. Many people in Lebanon describe their circumstances as like being held hostage. If the government resigned, then there is hope to be able to build the country and live our lives like we want to. We want it to become a proper state. We do not have a country and we are not able to live in one. What will a national unity government do after this destruction, blood and death? We can change. There are many educated people who are suitable to run a country. That frustration with a government that seems to have left the clean-up operation to its citizens exploded near Parliament on Monday evening. Possible names for new Prime Minister include Saad Hariri. He held the post until January but was forced out when the banking system collapsed. It's not the sort of break with the past people here are looking for. And the cabinet that's just resigned was dominated by the Iran-backed Hezbollah group and its allies. International donors will expect to see members of the opposition in the new cabinet before they consider releasing billions of dollars in reconstruction aid. Bernard Smith, Al Jazeera, Beirut.